So Israel has run and maintained the longest occupation in modern times and the occupation of the West Bank, Gaza, East Jerusalem. I mean, many people would argue the occupation started in 1948 and one can have that argument, but certainly for decades and decades there has been a brutal occupation where Palestinians are treated as second-class citizens. If you're a Jew, if you live in Israel, or for that matter in the West Bank as a settler, you are treated differently. There's two levels of justice and that's essentially what's become an apartheid state. So that's been the longest occupation in modern times. Now, to maintain that occupation, Israel has needed in its own logic to develop huge amounts of tools and technologies to control Palestinians and subjugate them. Now, of course, there are many examples where Palestinians have resisted that, October 7 being the most obvious example, which we can get to later. But for decades and decades, many Palestinians have lived, in fact, most Palestinians have lived under occupation. And the tools and technologies I'm talking about in the modern era, particularly since 2000, 2001, is drones or spyware or facial recognition technology, biometric tools. Um, Israel runs something called Unit 8200, which is the equivalent of the US's NSA, where all communications between and out of Palestine is controlled, monitored, listened to, surveilled, emails, phone calls, etc. So that's the way Israel has tried, in its view, to maintain that occupation. But during those years, what it's also been doing is promoting those tools and technologies as battle-tested in Palestine to huge amounts of nations around the world, democracies and dictatorships. This started really in the 50s before the 1967 war and the occupation of the West Bank, Gaza and East Jerusalem began. So very soon after Israel's birth in 1948, Israel has been promoting itself really as, in its view, running an effective so-called war on terror. This is how you control people, so the argument goes. Let us show you how to do it. And as I document in the book, there are really innumerable numbers of countries. I calculated in the book 125, some have said 140. No one really actually knows the exact number, but it's the majority of countries on the planet in the last half century plus have either bought some form of Israeli weapons, spyware, have taken Israeli training on so-called counterterrorism. And I'm talking about everyone from apartheid South Africa to the genocidal regime in Guatemala to the Iranian regime before the revolution, 1979. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. In the modern era, just briefly, Myanmar, which the UN has said has committed genocide in the last decade, after that finding, Israel was still selling weapons and spyware to the Myanmar regime. Now, that shows you that I mean, the arms trade is inherently amoral. I'm not suggesting that Israel is particularly amoral. And, for example, the U.S. arms industry is full of roses. I mean, let's be clear. The arms industry, by definition, is amoral. And the U.S. has about 40 to 50% of the arms trade in the world, the biggest by far. Israel's 10th. But... What Israel has in its backyard, which other countries do not, is a ready-made population who are occupied. 